say to God? Jesus! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! We want to talk about Jesus! But we also want to talk about Islam. And today we're going to look at the Quran. I give it over to Hatun. You go ahead and get us started. Praise be to Trinitarian God. Praise be to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. Today we want to talk about eternal word of God. According to Christian scripture, eternal word of God stepped into the world and lived among us and died on the cross for the sin of mankind. According to Islamic tradition, eternal word of Allah stepped into the world in a form of book. And the same according to Islamic tradition, eternal word of Allah got disappeared, eaten by sheep, and messed up until today. While tradition tells us the Quran, which is the eternal word of Allah, is corrupted, also history tells us the same thing. First, let's see and hear from Muslims what is the claim Muslim makes about the Quran. Any Muslim can tell me what it is the book you believe about. I have a Quran here. Does any Muslim believe this is the eternal word of Allah? Come on, Muslims, speak up. We need some Muslims to come forward and to say what they mean or what they claim about this book. Because we want to talk about this book today. Now remember, Muslims have always claimed that our Bible has been corrupted. Muslims always claim that we cannot go back to the original text. Am I correct, Hatun? Yeah, for centuries, the time Islam stepped into the world, Muslims start making silly claims regarding about our scripture. But what we can see today is, we have in British, li British Library, we've got one of the earliest complete New Testament. The Sinaiticus. And it's dated to 330 to 360 A.D. Approximately 325. As well as we've got 5,856 Greek manuscripts regarding the New say Testament. Say that again. How many did you say? 5,000? 5, 5,856 Greek manuscripts. These are the earliest manuscripts. Greek manuscripts of the New Testament. And that makes 2.6 million pages of the New 2. Testament. 2.6 million pages of the New Testament, just in the Greek language. Now remember, why is that important, Hatun? So New Testament is written in Greek language. It was originally written in Greek. So it's the earliest language that was used. Yes. We have 10,000 Latin Vulgates. We have 9,000 in other languages, but it's the Greek manuscripts that we're supporting today because those are the earliest. And why must we go back to the earliest? We want to know what people write from the original language. And even though our earliest complete New Testament is from 325, we know earliest New Testament manuscripts, P52, is only 30 years later than it is written down. So within the first century, early, moving into the, in second, the second century, century. we what? already have within 30 years, we have a manuscript that goes back just 30 years after it was yes, written. Yes, we have P52 dated 125 AD from the John Gospel chapter 18 and John Gospel is written down in 90 AD. Therefore, 35 years after it is written down, we've got the papyrus confirms what was in John chapter 18 verse 31 to 34. Okay. Now, these are the three oldest complete New, New Testament. Testament. You have the Vaticanus, which is in the Vatican in Rome. It's dated 300 to 325. You have the Sinaiticus, we'll say 325, possibly maybe a little later. And then you have the Alexandrinus, which is from the 5th century. Folks, two of these are here in London alone. You can see them for yourself. They're right here in the British Library. The Vaticanus is in the Vatican in Rome. So these are open to the public. They have all been scrutinized. We don't hide a thing. All of them are, we've been transparent. We know the dates on this. There have been hundreds of doctors written on it. And yet Muslims have always said that we don't have that problem, that the Muslims don't have that problem. What problem is that they're pointing to? That these are not the original. Am I correct? Yes. 
They don't like this because these are not the original. Hold your farm. We're not ready for you yet. We'll get to questions later. But can you see, Hatun? They are demanding of the Bible what they are not supporting with the Quran. Because what do Muslims say about the Quran? What do every Muslim say about the Quran? For 1400 years, I heard, I am not that old, but like, since in my lifetime, I heard that Muslim makes a claim that the Quran is the eternal word of Allah. Was sent down to men called Muhammad in 610, finished in 632. So for 22 years. Today, the Quran we are reading is dot by dot, letter by letter, sound by sound, exactly the same what Muhammad received. Let's see if that's what they said. Let's look at these quotes. This is Susan Honey. Let me hold it. She wrote it, Islam and Muslims. What did Susan Honey say? She said the Holy Quran is the only divinely revealed scripture in the history of mankind which has been preserved to the present time in its exact original form. That's Susan Hanif. Now, she was a convert to Islam. Maybe she doesn't know any better. Let's look and see what Fethullah Gulen says. Just, just a moment. Remember what she says. Preserved to the present time in exact form. The Quran I am reading today is supposed to be what Muhammad received. That is the 21st century claim by Muslims. Let's Absolutely. go to Fethullah Gulen. Fethullah Gulen is from Turkey. You know him because... They are trying to kick him out. Though. They try to kick him out. He's living in Pennsylvania right now in the United States. But he is very well known as a Muslim scholar. Let's see what he says. The Quran text is entirely reliable. It has not been altered, edited, or tampered with since it was revealed. All Muslims know only one Quran perfectly preserved in its original words since the Prophet's death when revelation ended. So this is going back to 632, he's saying. And from since 632, there is only one Quran exactly what Muhammad received. That's such a Now let's go to Abdullah Yusuf Ali. If any of you don't know who Abdullah Yusuf Ali is, he is considered to be the best translation of the Quran in the English language. I have here. He wrote this his translation I have in the translation 1930s. Here. He is considered to be the, the scholar par excellence on the Quran. He is the one that all other, most of all the other translations have been based on. What does he say about his Quran? So well has it been preserved, both in memory and writing, that the Arabic text we have today is identical to the text as it was revealed to the Prophet. Not even a single letter has yielded to corruption during the passage of the centuries. Not a single letter. Uh, that's a very big claim. A big Comes from a Muslim. Let's see if they are going to be able to back up what they are saying. Second one is Mavi Muhammad Ali. Not even a diacritical mark has been changed. That is the claim. Do you want to read it for us, Jay? The Quran is one. And no copy differing in even a diacritical point is met with. There are and always have been contending sects, but the same Quran is in the possession of one and all. A manuscript with the slightest variation in the text is unknown. <laughs> no, we're not saying this, and Muslims here are not saying it. These are well-known Muslims. Let's end with Shabir Ali. So you might think it is funny, but Muslims believe not even a dot of the Quran has been changed. What do we mean by dots? What are they talking about? What is a diacritical mark, Hatun? Uh, we will come to that one. Let's read the Shabir Ali one as well. Okay, here's Shabir Ali, Dr. Shabir Ali. He's a good friend of mine. I've debated him six different times. My last debate was in 2014. He will not debate me again. So that was but the last. he is the one that is saying this. We have a copy of the Quran dating from 790 in the British Museum. That's the 2165 Ma'il. That's the one we have here. We're just reading your own men. If you want to call them liars, that's up to you. Let's continue reading. Folks, that's 1,300 years ago, and we can compare that with what we're reading today, and we find them to be exactly identical. Exactly identical. Shabir Ali 
Dr. Shabir Ali, considered to be one of the foremost scholars in the Muslim world today, lives in Toronto, has debated hundreds of Christians, has always made this claim. He has a second claim. Let's look at the second claim. Because then he goes on and talks about another manuscript. But what is so important, he says, is to notice that throughout the ages of Muslim history, the Muslims have not quarreled over what the text of the Quran, because the text was known through memory work and through written materials. Did you hear that? Yeah. Written materials. Take that on board. Very important. Handed down right from the time of the Prophet. So there's a written text from the time of the Prophet. Muslims are They're already calling me a liar. Muslims are calling their own scholar is liar. What I'm just reading their material thing. and he's calling me a liar. So let's continue on. One of them, as, as I, I said, said, the two copies that were made 1400 years ago, so he's going back another 100 years, one which is the Toskent in Russia. Toskent is not in Russia. That's fine. So he doesn't know his own geography. That's so who's fine. lying here? There you go. For example, has been demonstrated by Ahmed Al Denfer in his book Ulum Al Quran to be early copy from that time, and we find no difference from that copy to what we're reading today. So what are you hearing here, folks? Unchanged. Unchanged. What are you hearing? They're saying the Quran's never be, ever been changed. Okay, it's never been changed. The Quran we have today is it the same all the way through the last 1400 years? Are you hearing that? Yes. Is that what they're saying? Has anything been changed in the last 1400 years? Nothing, according to them, right? Yes. According to them, not a word, not a letter, not a diacritical mark has been changed. Like Mansur. That's very big claim comes from the 21st century scholars. But the question is, in the seven, in the seven or eighth century, or even in the tenth century, did Muslims make the same claim or not? No, they didn't. Do you want to see what the early Muslims claim? Yes. Let's see if it parallels what the modern Muslims claim. So we have Sahih Bukhari who gives us what happened approximately 250 years early before 250 before he writes things down. Let's read what the Islamic tradition by itself by itself says. Okay, you want you want to start with Sahih Bukhari? No, we can start with this Let's one. Let's start with Ibn Abi Dawud. We'll go in sequence. Muslim scholars are telling whole mankind, not only to the Muslims, but everyone, that some verses of the Quran got lost. Many of the passages of the Quran that were sent down were known by those who died on the day of Yamama, but they were not known by those who survived them. Nor were they written down, nor had Abu Bakr, Umar, or Uthman, the third, first three caliphs, by that time collected the Quran, nor were they found with even one person after them. Now that's according to Abi Ibn, Ibn Abi Abi al Dawi. So you can see, this is a 9th century hadith compiler who is making this claim. Is that what the modern scholars said? No. 70 people died in the Battle of Yamama and they forgot the Quran. As they died, as they went to grave, they took the word of Allah with them and there was no one else knew what's supposed to be in it. Okay, let's see what Asuyuti says. Asuyuti, it is reported from Ispan ibn Ibrahim, from Ayyub, from Nafi, from Ibn Umar, who said, let none of you say, I have acquired the whole of the Quran. How does he know what all of it is when much of the Quran has disappeared? Oh. Son of the second caliph yeah. tells the mankind, do not say we have the perfect Quran because Quran got disappeared. Son of the second caliph tells that to the whole Muslim world, Quran got disappeared. Rather, let him say, I have acquired what has survived. Now, can you see? This is not the same of what modern scholars are saying today, or modern Muslims are saying today. What about 
or Sahih Muslim. This is the second most authority after Sahih Buhari. Let's see what he has to say. Go ahead. Some verses were forgotten. We used to recite a surah which resembled in the late and severity of surah, two, surah 9. I have, however, forgotten it with the expectation, with the expectation of this which I remember of. Surah 9 is 129 verses. A Muslim is telling the people, I know the surah which was as long as Surah 9, 129 verses. But I forgotten. I can't remember now. People forgot the word of Allah. <laughs> now let's go to Al Buhari now. Let's see what Al Buhari says. We used to read a verse of the Quran revealed in their connection, but later the verse was cancelled. How do you cancel a verse if it's perfect? It, come on, Jay. It was Allah who changed his mind and cancelled his own word, which used to be eternal. Okay, Al-Buhari goes on and says, Allah sent Muhammad with the truth and revealed the holy book to him. And among what Allah revealed was the verse on Rajab. What's the verse on Rajab? That's the verse on stoning. Yes. Hey, hey, guys. Okay, Muslims, we're getting some fighting here. Muslims, come to Muslims. control yourself. If you cannot control yourself, go to your mother. Okay, guys, calm down, calm down. Sir, control yourself. <laughs> Always when the Muslims come, we get violence. When we speak about the Speaker's Corner hasn't changed in two years since I've left. Oh it did, it did Welcome change. back to Speaker's Corner, folks. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, just, just. We need to Just move, just move. Jay, just move. Where's that pussy hole? Look here, look here. Can you get behind the You look Yeah, I mean. Just move. Okay, okay. okay. um, sir, can I pass through? Sorry. Folks, this is Speaker's Corner. Not Puncher's Corner, and we keep to speaking only. We have a tradition here of 160 years where we only come here to speak. Please, no punching. Let's stop this. Let's calm down. Calm down, calm down. Okay, let's continue on. Can you go and check the two Christians? You can say we call. No more of that. Okay. okay, they're here. Okay, now we have some verses which are missing. Allah sent Muhammad with the truth revealed, the holy book to him. And among what Allah revealed was the verse on Rajam. We already repeat that. Now that's the verse on stoning, right? Yeah, and then also in the same chapter we've got the verse which talks about adult breastfeeding. They we're, getting, we're getting to okay. that. Hold on to that. We did recite this verse and understood and memorized it of Allah's apostle. Allah's apostle did carry out the punishment of stoning, and so did we after him. I am afraid that after a long time has passed, somebody will say, by Allah, we do not find the verse of Rajam. Don't worry about them. We do not find the verse of Rajam in Allah's book. What's going on here, and why is this important? Because this is practiced in Muslim majority countries, and Umar is expressing those verses is not in the Quran now. And I am afraid we are not going to practice this anymore because it is not in the Quran. So what verse are they talking about? It's chapter 24, verse 2. When you read chapter 24, verse Different 2 Different version of that, yeah. It is not stoning. It is now a hundred lashes for the adulterer. But it used to be stoning. And Muhammad used to stone. And, and this is Abu Bakr wondering what's, I mean, Umar wondering what's going to happen now because he's going to, they stone the Prophet stone, it's no longer in the Quran. Proof that it was changed between the first two, first two caliphs. Yeah, and also this is practiced today in some of the Muslim majority countries as it was in the Quran according to the teachings of Islam. Okay, let's continue on. So that's Al-Buhari, now we come back to Ibn Dabi Dawah. 
parts of the Quran were overlooked, he said. I see you have overlooked two verses and have not written them down. And he goes and says what they are. What does that tell you, Hatu? Muslims are complaining. We cannot find the end of the Surah 9, which is from verse 128 to verse 129 in the Quran. You have not put them in the Quran. Let me tell you what it is so that we can put it in the Quran. Only one person's testimony made it to the Quran. Some verses were changed according to Imam Malik. This was changed by Hafsa, uh, not Hafsa, this was changed by Aisha. Aisha, the favorite wife of Muhammad. So even a woman changes the Quran. And remember, women are not intelligent enough, yet women are contributing into the word of Allah. And only the wife of Muhammad could do this. You can't do it, I can't do it, Sarah can't do it, but Aisha can. And this is the child wife of Muhammad, remember? Not she only was unintelligent. seven years old when he married her, Six. nine years old when he consummated, and he was 53. I don't know how that makes you people feel, but that is not relevant for today. Let's continue with modified. So here Ibn Mahdi Malik says, altogether Al-Hajjaj, who is Al-Hajjaj? He was the governor of Kufa under Abdul Malik there in Iraq. He modified it 11 modifications. How can a mere man modify it 11 times? Can you see what we're reading here, folks? Why is it we're reading? Then you have Sahih Bukhari saying, but Allah said, none of our revelations do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, but we substitute something better or similar. So here's even God saying he's going to change the Quran. <laughs> if he's going to send something similar, why he is like not sending something brand new, but something similar? There shouldn't be any changing. And also remember, Quran is identified as the eternal word of Allah. Allah, as the time goes on, Change and adopts his eternal word. There you That's go. That's not very wisdom. Is, is How that? much wisdom? Looks like God cannot make up his mind. But then Allah. we end. Allah cannot make up his mind. Then we end with this verse here. Right, narrated by Sunan Ibn Malad, Majah. It was narrated that Aisha said, the verse of stoning and of breastfeeding an adult ten times was revealed. And the paper was with me under my pillow. When the messenger of Allah died, we were preoccupied with his death, and a tame sheep came in and ate it. Now, I'll, as a woman, I'll let you explain that one. I'm not going to try to explain that one. Oh, I to explain it. So in Islam, for men and women to able to sit together who are not relative to one another, yeah. men needs to suck the breast of woman ten times. Wow. But Allah become Allah shows mercy, and then Allah brought that down to five. Something happened soon after the death of Muhammad. The verses which was under the pillow of Aisha got eaten by sheep, and today they are not in today's Quran. I think she gave it to the sheep. I think she intentionally had it eaten. She was tired of suckling, having men suckle her breasts. <laughs> we, know, we know she didn't like that. She was passing the men to her sister, but we don't know her heart. Those verses are eaten by sheep, and they are not in the Quran today. Okay, folks, what have we just done now? Why did we do this? Remember, we started by looking at what modern scholars say, modern Muslim scholars say. And we looked at every one of them, and what did they say? The Quran is perfectly preserved. It is exactly the same as that which was given to Muhammad, which exists in heaven. There is no word, there is no sentence, there is no verse, there is no surah, there is not even a dot that is different. Did you, did you know we went and quoted all that? But that is not what the 8th and ninth century scholars said. You know, so I'm not saying 7th century. These are actually ninth and 10th century scholars. We even, don't have anything from the 8th century, from any of these. it goes up to the 16th century. You're right. Now, hold on a minute. Why is it that the 9th and 10th century scholars were quite ready to admit that much of the Quran had been changed, overlooked, manipulated, lost, eaten by sheep? But that's not what they're saying today. 
You have a question about this? He's a heretic. I want to go back to, the, to your original point. No, I don't know. We are talking oh, about the Quran. Fair topic, fair topic. British Museum. Sir, we are talking the about the Quran. We can respond to the biblical yeah. question. It's available for anyone to read. Why do Christians today not use it? Why do they accept the Masoretic version, which was produced? Actually, I accept the Septuagint. Thank you. I, I, I accept the Septuagint. I agree with you on that. And I have the same question, but that's not Why the discussion today. Sir, that's not the discussion told, today. But people claim that the King James As we look is at, unaltered, is the infallible Sir, word of God. I don't, don't make that claim. Bible doesn't make that, that claim. Why yes, do claim that the King James You can do that on your bladder, and God. we will talk to you. But I do accept you the Septuagint. We're agreed on that. We're agreed on that. So let's move on. We do acknowledge that Bible, which is the inspired word of God, written by 40 different people in 40 different locations. We don't say Bible is like the Quran, eternal word of Allah. We do not say dot by dot, letter by letter, sound by sound, the Bible is exactly the same what it was given to Jesus. Okay, because there is nothing given to the Jesus. Jesus is the eternal That's word of right. God, gave himself to us. So, nobody believes, I hope no one here believes, that the Bible is eternal. Please we, don't say that. We do believe Lord Jesus Christ eternal, who gave himself for us. But is the Bible eternal? No. So Bible that's the first claim. We, don't, we do not make that claim that the Muslims are claiming. Can you see? We make two different claims. Secondly, the Muslims claim that the Quran was sent down over a 22-year period to a man named Muhammad between 610 and 632. Would we say the Bible was sent down to anybody? No. Men wrote it using their own hands, using their own ability, put their names, many of them put their names to the books they wrote. Am I correct? But we do say the eternal word of Yahweh, Lord Jesus Christ, was sent down. Okay. So do you see what she's doing? Every one of these claims, there is a response, but it's not the Bible, it's Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is eternal. The Quran is not eternal. We're going to prove that today. Jesus was sent down. We're going to show that the Quran was not sent down. Now, the Muslims claim that it was complete at the time of Uthman, 652. Would we say that the Bible was complete when it was first written down? And we would say yes. Absolutely. On that point, we would claim. New Testament has completed in 90 AD, which is approximately 60 years after the death of Lord Jesus Christ. Bible cannot be completed at the lifetime of Jesus because Bible gives us, especially the New Testament, the life of Jesus, his life, his death, and how the church started. So we do not have the same criteria we with the Muslims when it comes to that. Well, I hope you're all listening as to why we do not make those claims. Now the Muslims say, and this is hugely important, that the Quran they have in their hands today is exactly the same. You've heard that already. We've been quoting their scholars. This book here is exactly the same. That's the Arabic part of it, as that which was sent down to Muhammad, oh, that which was compiled by Uthman, that which exists on those eternal tablets that are in heaven, according Muslim now says today. Every Muslim should be saying today. They are starting to change their tune now, aren't they, Hutton? And why are they starting to change their tune? Because first of all, they cannot find this perfect, unchanged Quran from the time of Muhammad. They cannot find unchanged and perfect Quran from the time of Abu Bakr, as well as they cannot find a perfect, unchanged Quran from the time of Uthman. When was the first Quran? that existed that we have today. Hold on to that. I've asked Muslims this question. Hold on to that. In about two hours, we're going to answer that. you got to stay here to two hours to get that answer. But before we do that, we need to say, what is it that Islam says? How did the Quran begin according to Islam? And to do that, you need to go to Al-Buhari. You need to go to chapter, I mean, volume six, hadith number 509 and 510. Have you all read it? Well, here it is, right here. You can read it right now. It's in Arabic, and it's also in English. Let's summarize what it says, okay, to help them out. 
Yep. Now, according to what Al Buhari says, now, before we start, when did Al Buhari write this down? Anybody know the dates? He died in 870. 870. That's so he was a witness between 850 and 870, 20 years before he died. So that makes approximately 250 years after the death of Muhammad. 250 years. That's quite a long time. Actually, it's about 270 years, but that's fine. Now let's go no, back. If, if you write down 850. Then 850 that's to that's 870. Fine. Okay. That's now let's go ahead and see what he says. In 509, he says that when Muhammad died, the Quran still had not been written down. It was not written in a codified form. There was no Quranic codex at all. We don't know why. That's a good question. Why did he not write it down? What was his one responsibility? To receive the Quran and have it written down, right? Muslims will say the reason he did not write it down is because he could not read and write. We had a scribe. He had scribes who were able to read and write. Zaid ibn Thabi was a secretary. Surely he could read and write. What does Zaid ibn Thabi do? What does a secretary do? Typing, typing, typing. That's what typing. the master says, right? Yeah. Zaid ibn Thabi had 22 years to write it down. Why didn't he write it down? Come on, Muslims, you've got to come up with a response to this. Our other question is, Jay. He was a prophet for 20 years. He was a prophet, man of God for 20 years, and Allah trusted him and gave his word. He could learn how to write. What did he do? For whole 20 years, he couldn't be able to read, learn how to write down things. That well, says a lot about that. his knowledge, Jay. How many letters are there in Arabic? 28. 28 letters. 28 letters. That's all it takes. Hold this minute. I'll show you. If you look at the letters, you will see there are not many of them. When you look at the letters, you will see you can learn these letters. I learned them in two weeks. That's all it takes. And Muhammad couldn't learn in 22 years. There are only six letters that what we call Letters that are unique, that don't need any dots. The other 22 letters need dots to know what the letters are. But that's 28 letters complete. Could he not learn these letters in certainly 22 years? He already knew Arabic. Can you see why we're asking these questions? Now, it was not written down during his lifetime. Abu Bakr then writes it down, according to Sahih Buhari. He writes it down between 850 and 870. I'm sorry, no. he writes it down in 632 to 634. It's not he writes down, people come to him and then urge him to write the word of Allah down. Otherwise, as people die in the battle of Yamama, they are losing the Quran. Let's write it down so that we don't lose, we don't lose the Quran. You're, you're finished. So here you have the first Quran written down. All right? We have the first Quran written down at the time of Abu Bakr between 632 and 634. Are you following that? That's the first recension. What happened to that Quran? So, that Quran was passed to Umar, who was the second caliph. From Umar, it passed to the daughter of Umar, Hafsa. And Uthman takes place around 648 to 656. In 652, Muslim comes to Uthman and then says, no. Okay, now we're on Hadith number, volume 6, Hadith number 510. We're now in the next Hadith. We've now moved 20 years later. We're in 652, and Uthman is in power. He is the third caliph. What happens with Uthman? So people come to Uthman and then express that now there are differences in the Quran that they don't want Muslim nation to divide. So what do we do now? We need to make one perfect hold on, Quran. Hold on a minute. How could there be differences in the Quran if it's perfect, if it's guarded by God, if it's the final revelation? That's How could there be differences in the Quran? That's we call miracle of Islam. Just, just go back to other Can you see? He could. Allah could not even preserve the Quran for 20 years. Uh, what kind of God can't even preserve the Quran for 20 years? 
We're only 20 years later. We're only 20 years later, and already there are corruptions in the Quran. There are many different Qurans. So Uthman now goes to Zaid ibn Thabit. You're right in front of the camera. Move over to the left. He goes right to uh, uh, Zaid ibn Thabit, who is the secretary of Muhammad, and he asks him to get Hafsa's text. And then what does he do? So they get the Hafsa's text by the same person who wrote the first Quran down for the Abu Bakr. They get the Quran, and then they go and search for it, and then they put together one another perfect Quran. Hold on, before they, they do that, they, they ask did, a question. They did not copy from what it was written down. They put together one perfect Quran as a second Quran. And how do you know that it was different than the first one? All right, people are complaining about it, as well as Uthman says, if you disagree in anything, right in this oh, dialect. Not in anything. If you degree in a dialect. If you, if you have a dialectic difference, you must write it in the Qurayshi dialect. Now, who reads and writes Arabic here? Does anybody read and write Arabic? Come forward, please. Why would you need a second? Class? I'd like to ask you a question. She wants to. Pro she prefers okay, to I'm going to ask you and see if you agree. In order to read a dialectic difference in the Arabic script, you need vowelization, don't you? You need the dhamma, the kasr, and the fatah. Am I correct? Okay, exactly. But today, when you see a dialectic difference between Jordan or Egypt or Morocco, how you read it depends on where you put the vowels. The U, the E, and the A sound. Okay, when you read Arabic script, how do you change the dialects in the script? Okay, let's use the word kitab, book. If you say kitab or kutab, it's two different words, right? What has changed between kitab and kutab or kitaba? I know, but what has changed? You're not answering a question. What has changed? The vowels have changed. <laughs> Were there any vowels in the seventh century? No, there weren't. Can you come forward and read this for me without any doubts, please? Here's the example for you. If you are able to recognize See if you the can verses read that without, any vowels. without the dots, can you please read it? So you have to add the dots, you have to add the vowels. So you put the vowels there for everyone to be able to read exactly the same way, okay? So, no, 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 ma'am, ma hold on a minute, ma'am, hold on no, a no, minute. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, we, say it again. I can't hear you. We need you to come forward. So it's about uh, like, like 1690. Uh, there was uh, Abdul Malik in power, and this is the first, I would say, was really interesting. He was arranging somehow in his own state, and he was really interested also in something uh, 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 Structure. Do you know the date for Abdul Malik? 690. 685 to 705. Yeah. Were there any vowels or diacritical marks at the time of Abdul Malik? Yes. No, there weren't. Yes, there were. Can you show me one manuscript that has vowels in it? So, ma'am. Ma'am, show me one manuscript from the time of Abdul Malik that had any vowels. Just a moment, The Sana The Sana manuscript is 705. The Sana manuscript has no vowels. Jay, just a moment. We will show you the Sana manuscript right now. Just a moment, Jay. 
Ma'am, in here, I have the examples from That's late right century. There. Just a moment, Jay. In here, I have the examples from the late 8th century. Those are the manuscripts. Can you show me the vowels on those manuscripts? Here's the Sana manuscript. Do you see any vowels there? Yeah, that, that, shows, that shows the consonantal letter has been edited. In here, here's another examples, ma'am. Can you able to show us the vowels? Sorry, the question is very simple. In here, there are two examples. Are you able to show me the vowels on those manuscripts? I think the question is, why do you need those vowels? Oh. You said for everyone to be able to... Are you a native to... Arab speaker? You're not a native Arab speaker. Ask any native Arab speakers if they need the vowels or the dots. Here's the problem. There were no dots in any of these. Okay. I want you to read it if you don't have any. Since there's no dots and no vowels, why you said why do we need it? You read it then. Why do you need to be half us to read the Arabic? There, there are the people who live in Arabic countries. They read and write in Arabic. They are not half us. Why do you need to be half us to just read the Arabic? I'm not. I, I'm not okay. asking you to recite answer. it for me. I would ask two, uh, two things. I'm that's not my question. That's not my question. It, Arabic is nothing like German. There is a German. German has vowels built into the text. You have Germans. I'm sorry. You have German. You have consonants and vowels in the German script, right? Arabic had no vowels in it when it was created. Let alone the dots, consonantal dots. And that's why most people are not aware of this problem. I understand that you're not talking about these scripts, but you can't read it. No Arab can read it. There's a, you're an Arab speaker. Can, look, are you an Arab speaker? Can you read that? You need to have the dots, right? So when were the dots introduced? They were due to all of them were introduced after Abdul Malik. Exactly like exactly like you you want to speak English, you put dot on English and you want to read it as English. You can't make it. No, well, don't worry about English. English so, already has vowels in it. Like yeah, German, we yeah, already have the vowels there. You, can't read you can't compare German with Arabic. Like you can't compare English das, with Arabic. Das, das, because das the English script has consonants and vowels in place. The Arabic script, when it was first written, in these manuscripts had no dots, had no vowels, and that's why they needed to put the dots in. That's why you have a problem with Ahluf and Kidya. Now let's explain, let's explain Ahluf and Kidya. Just a moment. Also for us to be able to wrote, read this manuscript, we need consonantal dots as well, not only the uh, vowels. Uh, what was your question? So here we go. When were these introduced? When were the diacritical marks and when were the vowelizations introduced? Oh, well, we look at the 8th century manuscripts and we see it start processing. 9th century manuscripts, still it has been processing. So they were not canonized even in the 9th century. Yeah. They were still being introduced. There was many disagreements. Yeah, it's a process going on. It's a process going on. Now here is what we're, this is where many Muslims get this confused. That's why we're going to go slow with this. For those Muslims who are watching and those who are listening, remember, the diacritical marks did not exist in these earliest manuscripts. There are no dots in any of these. There are no dots in these. That's why, that's why dots needed to be introduced. They needed to be invented. If you just take one smiley face, you can put five different dots and they give you five different letters. Let me give you one dot example. above makes a na. Two dots above makes a ta. Three dots above makes a tha. One dot below makes a ba. Two dots below makes a ya. Na, ta, ba, ba, ya. Could be five different letters. Let me give But before example. those dots were there, nobody knew which letter it was. So when she says, we don't need the dots, she obviously cannot read Arabic. Because she, she could not read this Arabic when we asked her. Let me give another example. The word katala, which means kill in Arabic, it can be without dots. You can just change the place of the dots and then it can be elephant. It can be meat. 
it can be fought or it can be killed. Kutila. Yeah, just one. one but those are vowelizations. Those are vowelizations. Yeah, but like from that, just those dots are changing the word from the fight to kill to elephant to meat. See how important it is? We're going to show you an example of this right now. Because both, this is why we need, you need to, let's go to the one where the Katala and the Kutila is. When you look at these docks, here you go. Uh, Three, four, six. If you look here, here it says Katala. Mom, this, man, means, this might be helpful for you. But when you change the vowels like it does in the watch, it becomes Kutila. That means killed. Now, were the prophets, did they fight or were the prophets killed? If I'm a prophet, I would rather fight than be killed, right? There's a huge difference depending on where you put the vowels. So when she says we don't need the vowels, and you can read it any way you want, no, you cannot. That's why folks, they had to have the diacritical marks. They had to invent the vowels. Otherwise, you can pretty much say anything you want for any verse. Because of that, folks, there were many different derivations, many different schools. How many schools do we know of? Just, uh, let's just go back to the Quran of Uthman. That's where we stopped. Ah, uh, you want to go back again? No, that's Before where we, we stopped. Before we get into this, let's go back to... So, when Uthman was told to make one perfect Quran, People were calling one another kafir. It is because of the different recitation of the Quran. So those differences were very important, was making other Muslim to be non-Muslim, to be called non-Muslim. Therefore, Uthman asked Zayed bin Tabi to make one perfect Quran. From 650s, that one perfect Quran has been made, and whatever was written down before that, which is including the Quran of Hafsa, Hafsa were burned. It's right here, folks. You can see it right there. When they made this final copy, Zaidi bin Tabi, along with Alas, Zubair, and Hisham, so four of them were given the responsibility. Uthman then took all the other copies that disagree. Now remember, if they disagreed, these are not diacritical differences. These are not vowelizations. There are no vowels. There are no dots in 652. That's why the Germans didn't understand this. She said it's the same in German. No, it's not the same in German. This is completely different in Arabic. So if they disagreed, that means they had to disagree in the Rosam, in the consonantal text. That means they completely disagreed. What did Uthman do with those that disagreed? He burned them! Why do you burn manuscripts? I guess Islam is the only ideology out there who burned their holy book. Versus Christians were burned and given to the lions because of their holy books. See the differences? They burned their own writings. Okay. Now, once they had burned all of the other manuscripts, they had one manuscript which is the final text. Yeah. This is the final canon. They copied that, made nine of them, and then those nine went to nine different cities with someone who memorized it very well. Here are the nine cities. Look at them. Basra, Baghdad, Damascus, Jerusalem, Cairo, Alexandria, Aden, Herat, and Nishapur. Did you count nine? There they all are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine cities had nine copies of the Quran. That was in 652. That's only 1,400 years ago. Your Islamic tradition tells us. Don't you love this guy? We're quoting his own material, and he's asked, How do I know? We're quoting Al Buhari. Your own hadith compiler. I don't know, I wasn't there. But was Al Buhari there? No. Was Al Buhari there? No. When did Al Buhari die? 
870. When did this happen? 652. Do your own math. Was Muhammad even not there when that happened? Muhammad wasn't there when Uthman burned all the Qurans. Muhammad wasn't there when those Qurans have been sent to nine different cities because he was long dead. Okay, folks, that means they should have nine Qurans today. Yeah. Am I correct? Nine perfect Qurans, Surah 1 to Surah 114. No, 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 no. We want Muslims to show us those nine Qurans. Where are the nine Qurans? Where are they? Don't you love that passion? Don't you love that passion? Bye bye, and he walks off. Can you see why he's upset? Because we're questioning everything he believes. Without the Quran being sacrosanct, without the Quran being perfect, if the Quran has any hint of human intervention, you then can no, no longer depend on the Quran from God. For the Muslim, it has to be the eternal Quran. For the Muslim, every dot, every letter, every word, every verse has to exactly be the same. So when we are asking these questions, no wonder he gets upset. I would be upset if I was a Muslim hearing this. So, but we're not saying anything that Al-Buhari had already said. We're just reading Al-Buhari. So Islamic tradition makes Muslims to walk away from their own Quran. From their own Quran, from their own arguments. Now, so where are those nine Qurans? Muslims cannot find, come up with even one of them. <laughs> There's no nine. Quran from the seventh century. So what Qurans do they have? We're going to show you six, the six best Qurans they have. These are the six most authoritative Qurans. Let's go ahead and name them. Hatun, what's this one here? So first one is Topkapı Musaf, which is based in Istanbul in Turkey. Okay, in the Topkapı Palace there in Istanbul. Yeah, in okay. Topkapı Museum. Yeah, so when we look at this Quran, remember, we are asking one perfect Quran from Surah 1 to Surah 114, exactly the same what Muslims are reading today. And how much of the Quran is this? Is this complete? This is not complete Quran, let alone it has 2,270 variations. 290. 2,290. 2,290. No, 70. Are you, okay, we'll go okay. with her, she's the woman. <laughs> she's my boss today. So we'll go 2,270. I stand corrected, you're right, it is okay. 2,270. <laughs> so, See how obedient I am? Don't you love it? You need to be obedient to Christ, so not to what, me. What are manuscript variants? Explain to them what a manuscript variant is. So when we, when we put the two texts together, if there is any written version of the word, do not match with one another, we would identify that as textual variations. Let me give you an example right here. We have the top copy right here with the Allah on the side. And when you look at Allah, you will see that it is a, 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 a version. Go ahead and keep talking while I bring it up. So Right here is the top copy. So here's an example of what we're talking about. You can see that Allah has been added at a later date. So this is Surah 66 verse 8. When we put this manuscript with the current Quran together, with this one together, we see Surah 66 verse 8 is different. The it has the word Allah in it, but the top copy did not it, have the word Allah in it. It was inserted intentionally into the manuscript. At a later date, you can see it's in the margin. It's not as big as the other letters. It is much smaller, written in a different nib at a later time. Can you, are you following that? Why did they need the name Allah there? Because you don't need the name Allah in that verse. Let me give you some other examples. Here's another example. Here are, this is the, this is from the Codex, Uma, Fustat Umayyad Codex from the 8th century. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different places where Allah has been added at a later date. Did they forget the name of their God? 
So why did they have to put Allah in here? You don't need Allah in any of these verses because it's understood it's talking about God. Why did they put Allah at the top above it? You can see in a completely different name at a completely later time. Do you know the answer? Does our German friend know the answer? What? What is this? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Okay, she doesn't understand what we're trying to prove. What do the Muslims say about the Quran? Has it ever changed in 1400 years? Never. Every Muslim, we went through the scholars, we all read, you weren't here when we read them and quoted them. Every major Muslim scholar today says that the Quran we have in our hand is exactly the same that that which was written and compiled by Uthman in 652. Now this is from much, this is from the late 8th century. This is a hundred years later. It is not from the time of Uthman. In fact, none of these Qurans are from the time of Uthman. They are all from the 8th and 9th century. Uthman lived in the mid 7th century. Yet here they have added nine different Allahs, nine different cases where the name of Allah had to be added to the text. But you don't need to add it to the text. It would have been perfectly okay if they did not have the name Allah there. So why did they add it to the text? Do you want to know why? Does anybody want to know why? They added it to the text in every case so that it corresponds with the present Huff's text, the text we use today. The Huff's text has Allah in every one of these places. That's why they had to add Allah at a later date. Hold on a minute. So what is the Huff's text, you ask? We'll get to that. Let's continue on. So when we look at the top couple Musaf, which we were looking at, yep. What we see is, it has nothing to do with Islamic Prophet Muhammad. It has nothing to do with Uthman, let alone, it has nothing to do with the current Quran, 1236 verses. Yet, that Quran is not the top cup of Quran. We see there are 2270 textual variations in the top cup of Quran. You know, she is right. I was wrong by 20. That's I give fine. up. Okay, what about this one right here? This is the second most important one. Okay, let, let me just give the date for the top copper. Also, top copper manuscripts have been dated approximately 70 years after the Uthman. And also, what we see is certain I'm gonna, page of... I'm going to challenge you on that. Uh -oh. Parts of the top copper. I said approximately. But also, some of it comes from the 2nd century AH, which means eighth after century. 719. Yes. So, well into the 8th century. So parts of the top copy, she is correct, are written between the beginning of the 8th century up until 720. But other parts of the top copy are written as possibly up to 850, even 870. So approximately five pages of this Quran is written by someone else. Someone else. Yes. In a different hand. Yep. And who are the ones that did the research on this? They're from your country. Muslims. They are Muslims, but what are their names? Tayyar al Tukulaj and, and Isan Oli. Dr. Dr. Ekmelidin Isan Oli. So both Muslim scholars, considered to be the world's leading Muslim scholars today, they are the first ones to look at all of the six major manuscripts from 2002 to 2007. They took five years to research these manuscripts. They were given access to every one of these manuscripts. We are using their research. Let me repeat that. We're using their research to support, show you the problems with the Quran today. Let's continue on. So next one we have is the Samarkand. Samarkand right here. That's the Samarkand. It is, sadly and sadly, has nothing to do with Muhammad, has nothing to do with Uthman, and it has nothing to do with the current Quran we are reading. Remember, we are looking at simple Quran. 114 chapters, 6,236 verses from the time of Muhammad. Yet Samarkand has been actually dated 8th century. 8th century. Remember, Uthman supposedly finished the Quran in 652. That's mid 7th century. So we're talking 50, 60, 70 years later. But this only goes up to Surah 43. There's 114 surahs in the Quran. 
I don't want to be mean, Jay, but some of this Quran, part of this Quran has been carbon dated, and carbon dating goes 855. Oh dear. I so don't want mid to be mean. 9th century. Much too late. What's more, of the 43 surahs that are there, how many surahs are complete? Only one. All of the others have missing. How many surahs don't even exist amongst the 43? Let me read it. Surah 1 is not there. Surah 8 is not there. 9 is not there. 10 is not there. 13 is not there. 21, 22, 23, 24 is not there. 25 is not there. 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35 is not there. There. That is 18 surahs are missing oh. of the 43 they claim are there. Oh. So why do they say this is complete? Can you see the Muslims have been lying to us all these years? Oh. All these years, all these you years. need to make sure that you quote what the scholars are saying. Yeah. Do not listen to what the Muslims are saying. You need to go to scholarship. This is considered to be one of the greatest of the manuscripts. What does Alta Kulit say about the Arabic? in this manuscript. I think he doesn't think person who wrote the Arabic well knew the Arabic. He says men whoever wrote this Quran did not know their Arabic very well. Wow. There are grammatical mistakes, there is lazy writing written by about five different scribes. He says don't even use it. Don't even use it he says. It says undiscipled spelling, scribal mistakes, copyright mistakes written by amateur written by amateurs, like you and me. Now let's go to the third one. For sure it wasn't me who wrote it down, Jay. Okay, now this is the one that's here in the British Library. This is the one we have right down the street. This is the Ma'il Quran, known as the 2165 manuscript. It's called Ma'il because it's slanted. Ma'il means slanted in Arabic. So this concern, many Muslims believe that this was the greatest manuscript. It only goes up to Surah 43. It only contains 53% of the Quran, but it does contain more than the Samarkand. So that's at least one thing in favor. What kind of script is it? Ma'il, that's Hijazi. And what do we know about the Hijazi? Um, b just before that, I want to make sure that we all understand this Quran has nothing to do with Muhammad. This Quran has nothing to do with Uthman. So this is not the Quran. I am looking to be the exactly the same with 114 chapters of the Quran. This only goes up to Surah 43. Yeah. Now, can you see? I'm sorry, I meant 53. Let's go continue on. What was the date for this Quran? Because there's a huge dispute concerning the date. Um, I think you need to remind me that. When Martin Lynx, who was responsible for all the manuscript, who is a Muslim, convert to Islam, has been responsible for the manuscript for many, many years. When he dated this manuscript, he dated it to 790, late 8th century. When Baker, the current curator for the manuscripts, when he was came, became curator, he put it down to 690. Someone telephoned him, and after 10 minutes of talking to him, asking him how did he come to 690, they said, would you mind if we brought down a reporter to interview you? I'm Two weeks not... later, it went back to 790. What does that tell you, Hatu? It has... Colin Baker did not know what he was doing. But then who is Colin Baker and what is his expertise? He is a medical scientist. He only studies medical works. He doesn't study Quran. He doesn't even know Arabic. Why does so it... how is he dating it to the 7th century? Now, That's Islamic Awareness and the Dawah team have quoted him. But they don't realize that he didn't even know what he was talking about. Now Martin they Lynch, learned. Martin now Lynch they learned. knows much more what he's talking about. But can you see what we're dealing with? We are finding folk scientists who are dating these Qurans. You need to go to the Arabists, those who know, who are using paleographical studies to understand how to date it. Now, what about this one over here? So that is the Paris manuscripts. It has lots of on it. And it has nothing to do again with Muhammad, with Uthman. Could you get my coat? It has nothing to do with Muhammad, with Uthman. And it has nothing to do with the current Quran we are reading today. 
What we are looking is 114 chapters, 6,236 verses, exactly the same what we are reading, and Paris is not answer to that question. So there are actually three or four Paris manuscripts, are yeah. there not? Yeah, 328, 300... 328 A, 328C. These are actually different pieces. Some of them, one of them is 16% of the Quran. The other one is 22% of the Quran. So neither of these are complete. Am I correct? None of them are complete. Do they have manuscript variants? They don't contain many script variations as well as not the full Quran. Not the full Quran. In fact, when we look at the three, two, the Arab three, uh, the uh, sorry, three, Araba. BNF 328A, it goes, it has over 93 Arab, uh, has 93 manuscript variants in just the 22% that it contains. Now these are words or phrases that are different than the Quran today from these manuscripts, proving that someone changed them along the way, that there has been correction along the way. Let me, let me just tell you in summary what we have. We have Arabi 321, which is only 87 percent of the Quran, sorry, 87 folios. We have Araba 330 G. It is only 43 folios. Araba 320 C. Only 18, 18 folios. So none of them gives us the one perfect Quran which Muslims have been claiming to. No. Islamic Awareness website and Dawah team here believe that this is a 7th century manuscript. I'm sorry, a 7th century manuscript. They believe that this one is a 7th century manuscript. They believe that these four that we have shown you are all written before 719, within the first century of Islam AH. We're going to get to that question, but let's go at two more manuscripts that I find this one especially is the most exciting. This is the Husseini manuscript. The Husseini manuscript is found in Egypt, in Cairo. And some people call it the Cairo manuscript as well. Yeah. Does it have, is it the full manuscript? Is it the full Quran? No, it's not full Quran. It's only 1087 folios. It's not the full Quran. And it is dated in 2nd century Hijra, which is 8th century. Possibly some say even 9th century. Doros said 9th century. What about this Quran here? because this one is the most exciting. This was discovered in 1975 in Yemen, in Sana, in the Sana Mosque. When they were clearing it out, it, they fell to the ground. And when they looked at it, unlike the German lady over here, they could not read it. Even though she said you could read it quite easily. Nobody in Yemen could read it because it had no diacritical marks and it had no vowels. So who did they have to fly down to read this manuscript? German guy? The Germans, and who were they? Gerd Prynne, Dr. von Bothner, and Dr. Oli. The three most authoritative authorities on the early Arabic script. They are from Saarland University in Saarbrück in Western Germany. They were flown down in 1981 to look at this manuscript. They immediately realized that this manuscript was very early because it had no diacritical marks, it had no vowelization, they quickly took pictures of every one of the pages. They put them on the microfilm. The Yemeni government started hearing what they were saying, and they quickly confiscated their microfilms. This is what you do when you don't like what you hear. You either burn manuscripts or you confiscate manuscripts. Are you right? Burning and confiscating. It's going to get better. Hold on. So here, they confiscated their manuscripts until 1997 when they finally released the microfilms to them. This is a picture of one of those pages. Take a look here. You can see Surah 19. Where that yellow mark is, it jumps to Surah 22. What happened to Surah 20 and 21? Good question. It appears on this side. Can you see it's a completely different script? A completely different text. This is about 60 years after this one. There's 60 years between these two pages. That is Hijazi on this side. This is a later Kufic script, or a later what they some call a Western Hijazi. Now, what's fascinating when you look at this, you can see that this is a evolving text. Are you following that? 
an evolving text. But that's not all that they found. When they looked at it carefully, they noticed that parts of it had a lower script on it. Can you see? There are two different scripts there. Somebody wrote on this to begin with in Arabic, and then they washed it off and wrote over top. They wrote it the Quranic verses in Arabic. They washed it and then they rewrite the Quranic verses. It's not any writing, it is the Quranic verses. And today we are able to read what was the underwriting. Now, when you wash up, remember, these are all written on animal skins. Because they're so durable, you can wash it off. And when you wash it off, it looks like there's nothing left, right? So that's why they wrote over top. What they didn't realize is that after 1300 years, and that ink starts to bleed through. And so when you put it under ultraviolet light, you can see the lower text. Now the lower text has now been distinguished and has now been pulled aside, sorry, that's not the right word, has been extricated from the upper text. Asma Hilali wrote a book in 2017. So two years ago, September 2017, she has now shown the entire lower text. And what do we now know about that lower text? So there are 63 verses on the writing and there are 70 variations within the 63 verses. And what kind of variations are there? Verse there are now. verbal differences. 25 times it has different nouns, articles, participles, and conjunctions. There are prepositions, isolated letters, 29 times, and expressions that are different between the lower text and the Quran we have today. Entire sentences, 16 times, entire sentences are included in the lower text than what we have in the Quran today. Some overlap within the verses. So how do you deal with that? How did Asma Hilali deal with it? Remember, Asma Hilali is a Muslim. How did she answer that? They were probably written by amateurs or students. This is a school text, she call it. A school text means it's written by a student who didn't know any better. Now, what's the problem with that? You trust the eternal word of Allah, which is supposed to affect the eternity of people to a student. Why would you allow a student to write on parchment? This is animal skin. This is the most expensive form of writing. Remember, the early church did not have parchment. The early church, all the Bibles were written on papyrus until the 325, until Constantine, who was the emperor, became a Christian, made it the national religion. He therefore commissioned 50 of these codices. Made it legal for you to be Christian. Okay, can you see? He was the one that commissioned codices for the Council of Nicaea. So you don't have, even the early church didn't have man manuscripts like that. They would be prohibitively expensive to write on animal skin. Just the Sinaiticus alone, the New Testament, Sinaiticus, you have to have 62 different deer, deer skins to make that one codex. Who could have and who could make that unless you were wealthy? So can you see, why would they give this to students? Secondly, secondly, why is it a student's text is the oldest Quran in history? We don't have anything older, and it belongs to a student. <laughs> Thirdly, why did they then write over top? Now the upper sect, the upper part of the Quran, this upper text is dated to 705 and later. The lower text is possibly dated to 680 and later. Who, whatever the case is, you can see there are two completely different Qurans. So what is what is the conclusion of Dr. Elizabeth Pritt, who is the one who has done all the work on this manuscript? Do you know her conclusion? You yes. give me the conclusion and then I will add they something. Change, I, this is a nascent Quran with corrections then washed up and rewritten in 705. And different ayahs, so, not just saying. Here's the problem, here's the problem. When we look at the other earliest manuscripts, what we see is when someone makes a mistake or miss something, you just insert the word there. But in some manuscripts, we see whole words are being washed.
washed away and then they rewrite something 50 years after with the different verses. So something has been done intentionally to get rid of what was written before. Okay. Because if, if it was simple student mistakes, we would see the in insertions or corrections, not the full washed away script. The fact that this is the earliest Quran, the fact that it, they say is written by a student, the fact that the, the upper text does not agree with the lower text, the fact that the lower text disagrees in 70 places with the Quran we have today, yet it's only 63 verses long, proves that this is a completely different Quran. And that's why, folks, we're now saying it looks like they created the Quran and changed it already during the time of Abdul Malik. Where's that German lady? She talks about Abdul Malik. She's Can not, you see, Abdul Malik does have something to say for this. Abdul Malik is the one that had to create the Quran because he was the one that introduced the Prophet, did he not? He did. And he produced it on the Dome of the Rock, on the coins, and on the Caliphal, Caliphal Protocols. So we look at the earliest big manuscripts and we see actually none of them are from Muhammad, none of them from Uthman, and none of them is exactly the same what we are reading today. But also we see, as we look at those manuscripts, some of them are being dated with the carbon dating. Okay. So they looked at the date of the um, skin, date of the... Um, the Birmingham Four in 2015. Remember that when that yeah. was all over the news? BBC ran it front and center. Do you remember this in 2015? The oldest Quran has now been discovered because they took a part of the Birmingham folios, they took it to Oxford laboratories, they carbon dated it from 568 to 645. Muhammad was born in 570 and died in 632. So this covers the lifespan of Muhammad. And so, what did they say immediately? Miracle of Islam is Muhammad received his revelation two years before he was born. Now, most Muslims would say, Forget about the first date because the first dates predate Muhammad's life. Let's go to the latest date, 6 for 645. That's a discredit what Uthman did. According to Islamic tradition, Uthman ordered everything to be burned. But we have many scripts, according to Muslims, they are written down five years before Uthman burned Seven everything. years before Muhammad. Before Uthman died. Now, can yes, you see it. why Muslim scholars have not supported that manuscript? They realize there's a problem here. And the problem is carbon dating. Because if you're going to use that carbon dating, you've got to use these carbon datings. You've got to use not just the Oxford, you've got to go to Lyon in France, you've got to go to Kiel in Germany, you've got to go to Zurich in Switzerland, and you've got to go to Oxford, the four major carbon dating laboratories here in Europe. They are now carbon dating the Sanaa manuscript, considered to be the greatest manuscript, right? And what are the dates they're getting for the Sanaa manuscript? It starts from 390 to goes to 650. 550. Yeah, but all together, when you put them all together. These four here, from all four laboratories for the Sanaa A, go from 390 to 550. What's the problem with that? Muhammad was not even conceived. Islam has not even started. Muhammad it's wasn't even born for 20 years. Not 20 years, Jay. 330. Well, 390. That's over 100 years. They already have manuscripts of the Sana manuscript. So how is it that you can get the Sana manuscript from Surah 18, Surah 19, and Surah 20 that is from the 4th century when Muhammad doesn't even appear on the scene until the 6th century. So 200 years before the birth of Muhammad, we have the Quranic manuscripts. Okay, what's going on here? And what do you think is going on here, we, we cannot trust the carbon dating when it comes to the dating of the manuscripts because they give us different dates. They give us different dates and we cannot trust that. That's one answer. There's another answer. Let's just say hypothetically that the Birmingham folios are correct. What do they contain? Surah 18, Surah 19, and Surah 20. What do they talk about? Uh, surah 19 is about Jesus. Surah 18 is about Moses. Sorry, no, Surah 18 is the Alexander.
and the great Surah 20 is about Moses. So those stories which were known to the mankind before. Okay, let's look at the stories a little bit more carefully. In Surah 18, we have the story of Dual Karnayim, which is Alexander the Great. That is well known by 390, am I correct? Yes. Because Alexander the Great lived in the 3rd century BC, has three biographies written about him. So if it is 390 is correct, that would make sense. Surah 20 and 19 and 20 talk about the seven sleepers of Ephesus. That was a well-known story by the 3rd and 4th century AD, am I correct? So Islam, the writings confirms the stories which were existed before Islam. Before Islam, and they were well existed, they were well known by the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, up until the 6th century. If the carbon dating is correct, these just tell us really that these are the earlier stories. Why? Because much of the Quran has been borrowed. Oh, it comes from these sources. Why did Allah, I wouldn't say borrow, because I don't see in anywhere Allah got a permission from someone else to put those verses in the Quran. Okay, Why did it. Allah stole the stories which are not in the previous books? They were going to give them back later on. So all right? what do you do to, what Be nice do you, to them? What do you do to the people who steal the things in Islam? You chop their hand off. So should we chop the hand, right hands of Allah? But that's different. Okay, here we go. So if this is the case now, Hatun, if this is the case, where is that earliest Quran? Why is it we're still asking the same question? Yahya, we are asking, where is your earliest Quran, Yahya? So, hey, Muslims, where is your earliest Quran? I'm, I'm coming over. Where is the I'm earliest Quran? The Quran was recited orally by the Prophet. And it's not possible that after 23 years, you come and claim. Prove it. Yeah. Prove it. Did you know, see, he is not saying it was written down. He is saying it was orally recited. How many of you believe that? No. But yet. The Muslims claim it was written down at the time of Uthman. Why does he not walk away? Jay, also remember something about oral tradition. If oral tradition was so perfect, if oral tradition is so powerful, then why do we have Sunni Muslims and Shia Muslims? They both of them come from the oral tradition and their oral tradition is different. I want to see a written Quran. I want to see a written Quran. Where is this written Quran? I want to see that too. The, the Muslims claim that it was written down. I heard last time Muslims made a claim that they have got the 96% of their written okay, Quran. Let's go back. One minute. We're gonna let's go back to May 26. May 26. We were both on the ladder, were we not? And Mansur got on the ladder next to us. And what did Mansur say on May 26th? They have got the uh, Quran which goes back to the oral tradition as well as textual, textual tradition. History of from the, the Quran first back of to Uthman. Not just oral, textual history of the Quran back to Uthman. So that means that there is a complete text of the Quran from the time of Uthman, 652 AD. So what's your name? You know my name. No, you forget. Name? no, no, no. You know my name. No, I forgot. What's your name? You forget. Ask her because I guess I'll tell you what name. Everybody knows my name. Everybody knows my name. Do you know his name? Nobody knows my name. So let's go ahead. So here we go. The name is Sayyid F11. The name is Sayyid F11. Yahya, who always condemn all of you yeah. according to your Bible with reference. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, yeah. It's the name Yahya. Yeah. Jay, sorry. When people don't know basics about their Islamic tradition, I think we should engage with him later. So, okay. can we? But nonetheless, where are you in the Islam? No. no. Okay, we need a scholar here. Well, let's go ahead and ask. According to Mansur Ahmad, who did say this, he said there was a textual history all the way back to 652. 
the back two of no. life. No. So here's the question we're asked. If is there is a textual history all the way back to Uthman, that means the Muslims have to provide a manuscript from the time of Uthman, 652, 114 surahs, complete Quran that is unchanged. The same Quran that we have in our hand today. It must look just like this. Do you know of any Muslim that know that has a Quran from 652, 114 surahs that looks just like this? So he admitted 114 surahs, and we know that we have only one Quran orally being written down. With the prophet we don't want to hear oral. We don't want to hear oral. You can make up anything oral. I want a written text. Now that was the claim. In this world, where that Quran is right now, okay? Any museum, but from the seventh century, from the seventh century, or even the eighth century, or even the ninth century. Why not the tenth century? Why not the tenth century? Why not the, why not the eleventh century? Just, just, just go with the seventh century. You're going to see that there is not even one Quran, even the eleventh century. But let's start with the seventh century. Where is it, Yahya? Where is it? Where is it? He won't know. He won't know. You never know. We he have might know. every month of Ramadan recitation of the Quran, which is memorized by all pro all people. Yeah. When any, I was any, this is different than what you are holding. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which one he decides? Ask him which one he decides. In between, I, I will say, when the Imam make any which mistake, Quran does he anyone decides during Ramadan? I was very yeah. specific. Do you recognize this Quan right here? This you is don't. an Arabic Quran written by Hisham ibn Ahmad. Is this the same as this Quran that I have in my hand right here? Or which Quran do you recite during the Ramadan? Besides, <laughs> there are 1,347 differences between these two Qurans. These are both Arabic Qurans. Yet there are 1,347 differences between the Hutz Quran and this one by Hisham ibn Ahmad. So which Quran did they memorize? It depends about who prints this one and who 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 gives the authority for this one. Because we use the Saudi one. And you use the Saudi one. You hear it? Anyone? Well, okay. Anyone. Hold on. We use the Saudi one. Hold on. We're going to tell you when that was created. Hold on. This gets better and better. We use the Saudi one. Remember that. Let's continue on. We'll come back to you. Okay, no problem. I love you. It's good to see you again. Hey, we need, we need to get some ice. Ices. Okay, well, we remember, we are talking about the Arabic Quran in the 7th century, 652, 114 surahs, unchanged. That's the question you're looking for. And you all want the answer, don't you? Well, except in the 11th, 10th century, one change. I've asked this question. Don't go, don't go on that time. question. They've never answered me this question. Now, on May 26, on May 26, go up on GCCI, go up on Fender Films. We filmed what Mansoor said. Mansoor, you notice, is not here today. He's over there, Jay. He was over there, but he's now left. He's over there. But can you see, he got up on the ladder like He put his ladder next to us, and he said, we have a textual history that goes back to the time of Uthman. He didn't say Muhammad, he said Muthman, 652. I immediately turned to him, go look at the video and see what happened next. I say, okay, Mansur, show me one manuscript of one Quran that's 114 surahs that's from the time of Uthman. What did Mansur say? He was quiet, he didn't answer. So I gave him a second option, okay? Show me one manuscript that's 114 surahs, that's within the seventh century, 699. He said, you're not listening to me. That's not what I said, he said. I said, this is Mansur saying, that it's, we have the complete Quran by the first century AH, after Hijrah. 
the first Islamic century. Now, when did the first Islamic century go to? From 622 to when? 721. 719. I said 721 because I gave him two extra years. But the, seventh, the first Islamic century goes from 622 to 719. I said 721 on the day because I wanted to give him a little bit more leeway. He said, we don't have a complete Quran. We have 97% of the Quran by 721. What does he mean by 97%? Which 97%? But hold on a minute. Is that 100%? No. So there still is no Quran that is complete, 114 surahs by 721 AD. Now I want to show you what he meant. And there is still no Quran in the 8th century, 114 chapters with 2000. But you look 6,246 words. You have to you have how many no, 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 of the Bible you have? It's your Quran. It's your Quran we're talking about. Do we, about. we make this claim about the Bible? No. Do we have the originals? No. No, we don't. None of us make that claim. We would never make that claim. But the Muslims are making that claim. So here we go. In order to understand what Mansur was saying, He's looking, you need to go to the Islamic Awareness website, which is the website, website today that houses all of the Qurans. It's the most extensive website in the world today. It's headquartered at Cambridge University. It's one of them. It is the one you need to go to to see all the earliest manuscripts. Now, this is the graph they have to get 96%. You notice, it starts very small and gets bigger, 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 bigger. By the first 100 years, they have 96%, but they don't have 100%. Is this one Quran? No. How do you know? Because. Turn the page. This is the next graph they have. How did they get 96%? That is it right there. They had to go to 63 different Qurans to find that 96%. I just said no. But hold on a minute. Are any of them complete? No. no. The first know? one. Have you, you ever read it? it? Have you ever read anyone? Read the Quran? Have you ever read it? Have have you ever read just it? look at the or graph. Where's the rest of the Muslims? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without any reflection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is the Muslims? What does this graph say? That's the percentage of every one of these manuscripts. So the best one is the 2165. It only has 57% of the Quran. That's the best they've got. That's the best they've got. Let me make the other point. ones are 22, 22, 22, 19, 17, 15, all the way to only a few ayahs. He went from 63 fragments. To 57. 53 fragments. It gets better than that. It gets better than that. It gets better, yeah. Have the Muslims on the Islamic Awareness website, have they read any of these manuscripts? Yes. Have they the Muslim re recited this Quran <laughs> in continuous Which way? Which Why you say no? Why you say no? Yeah, yeah. How do you know? Have they read any of these manuscripts? How do you know? The manuscripts, the manuscripts they never read because they do not recite the same Quran what they are reading today. Do they still exist? Can you yeah, there see? Are he says they recited it. Have yeah. any of them recited these manuscripts? What do they recite today? Do they recite this one? They or do they recite this one? They have to recite this one. So here's the million dollar question, Yahya. Is this the same as these? I didn't. I don't know what this because You I don't know. know. But I know what And I neither know. do the Islamic when, Awareness website. They haven't been know. read these manuscripts. Why have they not read these manuscripts? Because Muslims do not ask this question. This is not a question Muslims would ask. Only we ask this question because our Bible 
has already gone through this test. How do we know what our Bible is? We go to all the earliest manuscripts, am I correct? We look at all the 2.6 million pages of the Greek manuscripts. We tabulate what they all say and we come to a finalized text. That's called historical criticism. Let me just make a point, Jay. So there are 63 manuscripts where Muslims try to put together 96% of the Quran. Even though with this, these 63 manuscripts, still they do not have approximately 80 verses of the Surah 2. Did you hear that? Surah 2 is the largest surah in the Quran, is it not? Yeah. 286 verses. 286 verses. It's the largest surah in the Quran. And they're missing, all of them are missing what? So when you put those manuscripts together, you get to have 174 verses. Approximately 100 verses are still missing. So of these that they have listed here, 170 verses are missing! So, now, why did they say that? So, approximately 10 of those manuscripts have the Surah 2. And approximately 100 verses of the Surah 2, still we do not have it. No, that's Surah 24. Now, can you see? They took a Surah here, they took a few ayahs there, they took another few ayahs here. Can you see how small they are? Every one of these are nothing more than fragments. And by adding them all together, they get 96% of the Quran by 719. Are these, is this at a complete Quran? No. Do you see any complete Quran here? No. So number one, there is no complete Quran. Almost a hundred years after Muhammad, they still don't have a complete Quran. And they, those are not the same with what we are reading today. Do these equal, are they parallel with the Quran we have today? We don't know, because they've not read any of them. Now here's the other question. Are all of these prior to 719? We wanted to find out. So we went and did a research. Take a look at what we found. Every time you see an arrow, see those arrows? All of these arrows, 19 of them, are all after 17, 719. They do not, there is no agreement on their dates. These are tentative dates. The scholars do not agree that they are prior to 719. Let me give the name but of the manuscripts. Take a look at how many of them are the biggest Qurans there. Do you notice? Most of them are the largest Qurans there. Proving that this claim that these all go back prior to 719 is a lie! Welcome, welcome to the world of Islam. So many scripts which is in British Library identified by the Islamic Dawatim as the first century Hijra manuscripts. Yet it is identified by the scholars not the first century Hijra, but late 8th century or early 8th century. Remember Martin Link's dates it to 790, so late 8th century. century. This is not prior to 719. This is 790. That's a whole 70 years later. But it only goes up to Surah 53. It's missing most of the Surah. I'm not most, sorry, that's not quite correct. It's missing much of the Quran. Can you then see why we're asking this question? So here's the million dollar question. Since we now know there is no complete Quran up on the first century of Islam, up to 719, we know that there's no Quran that's 114 surahs. We know that they claim there's 96% of the Quran. We now dispute that because 19 of the ones they claim and the biggest ones they claim are all after 719 by most reckoning of most scholars. There's going to be an awful lot of argument between yay and nay. So here's the next question. Is there a complete Quran by the 8th century? Complete and exactly no, the same but Quran. I said you if you mean. don't know, say I don't know. Because you are going to lose one million. And you, if you Those are the message, simple you questions. You yeah, yeah, yeah. should know about no, that. Yeah, 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 we are not asking you to explain yeah, yeah. us the yeah, yeah. quantum okay. physics. We are asking you where is the simple Quran? 114 chapters. Exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. the same with the Can Quran what you are reading.
Ukraine today from me? 8th century. Simple question. None of you needs to be Einstein. Can, okay. you, can you tell me where is the complete 114 Sora 8th century Quran? Where can I go? Like the British Museum, like anywhere in the world, maybe the top cabin, maybe I don't know. We're going to tell you before where, where we end today. I, where do I find we it? will okay. tell you the Eight answer century. to where this. Find that? Pick up, but pick you're up. not going to, he's not going to like pick, our answer. Pick up, pick but up, hold on to that question. Pick up any copy of the Quran and read oh, it, and you will find 114 oh, 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 2019. There's a two different copies, brother. What is the How many? Yeah, yeah, which one of them? 97, 97, 94. Yeah, let's continue on. Can you see? Already now pretty much delineated. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We already pretty much delineated that there is no complete Quran in the first century up till 719. There is no Quran up to the 9th century or the 10th century or the 11th century. No Muslim has been able to produce a complete Quran, 114 surahs, even by the 11th century. We're still waiting. So when was the Quran Finalized. Hold on to that question. Before we get to that question, do these Qurans, do any of these Qurans, do they parallel the Quran we have today? Exactly. Word for word, letter for letter, diacritical mark. Start by dot. No. Can you see? How do we know they don't? Because Yahya told him. No, Yahya would not say this. Yahya doesn't know what we're going to do next. Thank God Yahya's up here. He's not a scholar. Don't blame him. Because people did look at the manuscripts. As they look at the manuscripts, they have seen intentional corrections in the earliest manuscripts. This is the first man to do exactly what the Muslims should have been doing for the last 1400 years. He asked this question. He did his doctoral thesis, Dr. Dan, Dan Brubaker, Dan but his has a middle name, Dr. Dan Brubaker, decided in Daniel, 2010. Daniel Allen Brubaker. Daniel Allen Brubaker. He decided in 2010 to do a study looking at the earliest manuscripts to see if there were any variants. That means words or phrases that are different in the Quran do we have today from those manuscripts? He was given permission does to go to... realize that all this name is given? None of them can speak Arabic or read Arabic? Really? Is, Dr. Dan Brubaker can speak and read Arabic. Arabic. You lie without any shame. Shame yeah, yeah. on you. He you lie without any shame. He reads, he reads shame. and writes Arabic. And he reads and writes Quranic Arabic, which is better than you can do. But here we go. Here we go. Why is it that the Muslims have not done this research? Why have the Muslims not done this research? In 1400 years, it was an American who reads and writes Arabic who had to go to every one of these libraries, every one of the museums, get permission to film them. Now, he was hoping to get maybe one or two variants. By 2014, he finished his doctoral thesis. Guess how many variants he found by 2014? Anybody know? You know. In 2014, it was only 800? 800. He had found 800 variants in every five one. Five years ago. That was five he years ago. He found hundreds of insertions above and below the line. He found hundreds of erasers. Can you see they erased it? They've erased it. They've erased it. He's found hundreds of erasers overwritten. They erased it, then wrote over top, sometimes in a different ink. Here you can see they've erased it with two words, and they replaced it with kal, a cuff and a lamb. Here they've erased it, and they put up another word over top of it. Hundreds of overwriting without erasers. Now, folks, may, may these are the most damaging. No, you the may coverings not. are the worst. Because the coverings show that these are intentional human changes. Human changes. These are human changes. Now, did you notice he then put his first book together? This is the book you can get. We introduced this on May 26th, did we not? On May 26th, we got here, and it was published two hours before we got up. Am I correct? How many of those corrections did he put in this book? I wasn't listening. 22. 22. Not 800, but he, just 22. He gave us 22, but today he's got approximately 4,000 corrections in... 4,000! 
Tatum out of 4,000 that he has found. Now, why is it Muslims say that the Quran has never changed? But hold on a minute. These are not diacritical changes. These have nothing to do with vowels. Remember, we talked about that earlier. Every one of these changes have to do with the consonantal text. These are much more damaging. Now, we introduced them back in May 26. Do we want to go through all of them today? I can give you a couple of examples. I can give them a couple of examples. This is Surah 5, verse 116. When we look at the manuscripts, we see all those underlined words were edited into the Quranic manuscripts. And it does change the meaning of the words. They edit, did you say to the say to them? Surah 17, verse 52. Intentional insertions into the Quranic manuscripts and the phrase they insert is he will call your name and you will answer. Whole the sentence was intentionally inserted. Surah 23 verse 45. The word his brother were inserted. Examples after examples. Human beings correct the eternal word of Allah. Give me some examples, Shay. Okay, let me show you this one here. Here you see an insertion. Okay. Quite, 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 quite. Can you see? Can you see this has been added at a later date? It's been added between two letters. That is Hua. It is, okay? Or he is. Okay, third person singular. Why did they put that at a later date? You don't need it there. You can still read it without the Hua being there. So why was this added to the text? At a later date, with a different name, completely different author. The reason why, because with that Hua there, it now parallels the 1924 Huff's text. Hold on to that. This Quran here. Look at this one here. There's Lahum. That's plural. It used to be laha. Why do they need lahum? They didn't need it plural. You can perfectly understand it. In laha, laha used to be to him. Now it means to them. So why do they need to change it from lahu, laha to him, to lahum to them? Because it now parallels the 1924 Huff's text. The 1924 Huff's text. Or it parallels with what they are reciting and reading today. Take a look at this page. Can you read this? What does that say up there? Allah. What does that say there? Allah. 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 Nine times they had to write the name Allah above the line, adding it at a different date in a different name. It doesn't need to have Allah there because it assumes that Allah is already there. This is the only one that you needed it to get there. So why did they name? Why did they add the name Allah nine different places? You know the answer? I've already told you the answer. Is it forgotten Allah? In every case, you do not need the name there. It's already understood it's talking about God. The only reason they wrote Allah in all nine places was so that it paralleled the 1924 Huff's text. Am I sounding like a broken record? I, I think it is very sad. As we look at the earliest manuscripts, we do not see one perfect manuscript. And I find 31 times in Genesis the word Allah in your Bible. Why? Let him, let him answer. Yeah, yeah. Where did you leave your ears, Yahya? Yeah. Listen, he's talking about your eternal book and you messed up again. In the modern day Arabic Bible, the name Allah is the name for God. Because all over the Arab world, that is the name for God, unfortunately. Now let's go here. What is here? What have you seen? This is an eraser, am I correct? Yes. They've erased the word underneath. We don't know what it is. They've not replaced it with anything. What does that tell you? Is this a copyist error? 
No. Or is this an intentional correction? It's an intentional correction by a human at a later date. They're not even trying to hide it. Can you see what we're showing here? None of these are. Now look at this. This is the cover of the book. One, two, three, four times. Four times. Who's got my book, by the way? Who got your book? No, the the book. This one here. Come on, raise the book back. It will come, it will come. Someone's got anyway, it here. He Can you see here? One, Bible. two, three, four times. They have added other words over here. This is the cover of the book here. Hold this a minute. That's Surah 6 verse 91. Allah. Allah should not be there. This word should be here. Min Allah. But this one is written in the margin. They forgot to take this one out and replace it, though they wrote it later. There's another one here. Can you see one, two, three, four times they've had to change the text? Why did they change the text four times? Why? Why is they change the text? Go ahead. What's the reason? It now parallels the 1924 Huff text. For the same reason they've done it for almost every one of these times. Let's continue on. Muslims are trying to tell us that this is merely a scribal error. An entire line has been added between the lines. Why did they add that line there? Because now it parallels 1924 Huff's text. Here you can see, here is Sama written above it, the seven. Al Sama, the seven. The seven what? The seven heavens. The seven heavens. Why was the seven? Why was the seven added at a later date? It's on the line. It's a late adoption. Because it now parallels the 1924 Huff text. You still don't get it, do you? In every case, you will see. Every case where there's an addition, where there's an insertion. Where there's an eraser. Now look here, Bibithli. There it says Bibithli. Do you notice it has diacritical marks? It has dots above and below the line. It has violation. Can you see the custard there? Which must be after. Can you see the custard there? Which must be after. That is the E sound. That did not exist when this was written. There's no, there is no vowelization in any of the script. That was written at a later date, at a later time, in a little bit different dip with the vowelization in, proving it was written much, much later. Are you following that? Examples after examples, we see Muslims change their earliest manuscripts and they intentionally correct it. He still doesn't get it. He still doesn't get it. Now here you have two different manuscripts. You have the Marshall Manuscript and you have the, out of the British National Library, which is the Petropolis Manuscript. Two different manuscripts. That is the Marshall Manuscript. This is the Petropolis. In the same verse, Surah 40, 34, Ayah 35, it has been changed from Kala to Kalu. He says to they said. The exact same changes in two different manuscripts at the same verse at a later date. Here you can see intentional changes to two completely different manuscripts, thousands of miles from each other, and yet they have the same changes. Why did they change from Kala, he said, to Kalu, they said? Because the 1924 Huff's manuscript has Kalu. Are you following there? Are you following me there? Hold on a minute. You're jumping ahead. You always like to jump ahead. We'll get to that. Hold on. Now tell folks, can you see in every case, let's move on because we have a lot of these. I want you now to go to this one here. Number 20. Here you can see an entire covering. Can you see the covering? With an entire line that has been added over the Doha manuscript in Qatar. Doha, Qatar. And they've rewritten it in a different ink, completely different ink, with different words. Why did they change it and why did they cover it to begin with? Because it now parallels the 1924 Hofstede. Look at this page. This is the Husseini manuscript. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Am I sounding boring to you? Can you see? It's the same answer every 
time. Who said liar? Who said liar? The guy studied for a long time. Don't tell him liar. He might. Thank you. He's converting. He's finally converting. He says I'm not a liar. I want. You are seeing the evidence by your eyes. We will show you more. We'll show you one last slide. Can you see the coverings there? Can you see it there? Can you see it? Yes or no? Can you see a whole thing has been covered right there? Another line has been covered, right? Why did they cover it? And wouldn't you love to pick it up to see what they covered, right? But has it been written in a completely different script? This is a more stylized script, elongated script. A much later script, a much more stylized Kufic script, written at a later time, it is not to say that's a whole sentence and a half that's been covered over and replaced with three le three words. And why? why did they replace it with those three words? It now conforms to the 1924 Huff's text. Are you starting to get it? So what is this Huff's text? Now we're going to answer your question and we're going to answer your question. Your question is, as long as you look at the Sibin Saud family text, the Saudi text, we follow that. So when did the Saudi text come into existence? Who knows? No, not 1925. 1985? 1985? Hold on a minute. What do we know happened? In the city of Cairo, in Egypt, just one city, they had a problem. Because whenever they had a test on the Quran, they noticed that every one of the answers from the students in high school was different. Why? Because some had this Quran and some had that other Quran that you have, Husseini's Quran. And you should see, these, there are 1,347 differences between these two Qurans. How can you have standardized tests? In Cairo, if you have 1,347 differences between just two Qurans, there were 39 different Qurans being used. Now, how many differences have you found in just 23 of them? Over 93,000. Okay, listen, did you hear what she just said? We have looked at 23 of those Qurans. She has 32 of them here in London. And just looking at 23 of them, how many differences has your team found? There is over 93,000 between those Qurans. Wow. Can you ask her? Can you ask her? 93,000! Can you ask her if she can Hattu, be did you do any of this research? Did you do the research? I did, I did, did you do the Arabic research? Um, I give them the references for them to check okay. it. So, did Arab speakers do the research on the words? Yeah, they confirmed the differences. So, the differences were done by Arab speakers who know Arabic. They were mother tongue Arabic, right? So, they were all capable of seeing the differences. Am I correct? They're all capable to explain the differences, but you don't need to be Arabic speaker to see the differences because they are visional. Just take off your glasses. You can see they are written differently. Uh -huh. Have you seen the ones we've shown you? Yes. Yes. Do they look different yes. when you erase it? Do they look different when you cover it? Yes. Do they look different when you insert words above the line? Yes. When you saw the be misleading, does that not change the text? Yes. So these are visual. Do any of you speak Arabic? No. But you can see the differences, yes. right? Yes. These are all visual, right? Yes. So you don't need to speak Arabic to see these are human intentional corrections time correct. right time now let's go on okay here we go so this was only for the city of cairo in 1924 muhammad ibn ali al husseini al haddad remember that name muhammad ibn al husseini al haddad can you remember that it just drips out of your mouth, doesn't it? He was given the responsibility by the Department of Education of Cairo, only Cairo, to come up with one text, one Quran, only one Quran. If you could open up that page where that great Did he manage to do so? No. So he decided that he was going to look and decide he chose one Quran. Now look at here. 
He had 39 to choose from. 39 to choose from. Which one belongs to you? Which one belongs to you? I like the green. Now you notice, every one of these have hundreds, thousands. Here's one that has 5,000 differences. These are from five different cities. These are students living in the 8th, the 9th, and 10th century. These are not living at the time of Muhammad. This is not the time of Uthman. This is 144 years and later. Are you following what I'm saying? These students lived in Mecca, Medina, Damascus, Kufa, and, and Basra. Two of them are Iraq, that's in Syria. Those are in Saudi Arabia, or in Arabia. Now, he had 39 that he could choose from. We have 32 of them today, don't we? You have them. We have found 93 differences, 93,000 differences with just 23 of them. So what did he choose? Which one did he choose? 6,000. How many verses in the Quran? 6,234. How many? Okay, here we go. How many? So, so they, which one of these 39 did he choose? So now they, we know according to tradition there were 50 different ones, right? Yeah, so tradition talks about there are 50 different Arabic Qurans in 939, but when they picked the Hafs Quran, they went with the Ottoman Hold on, we haven't got the Hafs yet. You've jumped the gun. I was answering the question on the Egypt. So which is the one they chose? She's just giving you the answer. This one right here colored in black. This is the one that Muhammad Ibn Ali al husseini Al-Haddad chose in 1924. When did he die? 796. What century is that? The late 8th century. How many years after Muhammad? 144 years after Muhammad. 144 years at the Muhammad. You don't know your maths. <laughs> See if I'm correct. 796 minus 632, it's 144 years. 796 minus 736. Oh, you're right. It's, it's, worse. it's Uthman. Sorry, Uthman. From Uthman to him is 140 years. It's fine. Don't now, here we go. go he Dubai. is the Huff's Quran. That's the one he chose. Why did he chose? Why did he choose Huff? Because Huff is a nice looking guy. Exactly. Actually, that's not true because we don't know what Huffs look like, but we know we cannot trust the Huffs because Huffs borrowed people's book and intentionally he never returned it. We don't know if he was handsome, but we know Muslims did not trust him. But when it comes to the Quran, they picked the Huffs Quran in the intention that was the Quran which Ottoman Empire, as they conquered the other lands, tried to live with the other people. That was the Quran they were using. Ottoman Empire was using the Huffs Quran. Therefore, lots of countries knew Huffs Quran better than other Quran. So they picked the Huffs Quran. So they picked the Huffs Quran knowing that he was despised by all the others. He was not even trusted because he would not give back that which he had borrowed. But more than that, so, how know, many Huff's Qurans are there? Just a moment. So they did not, not put the Huff's narration not. into the Hadith because they cannot trust him. But today they are reading the eternal word of Allah from Huff's. Okay, hold on a minute. How many do we have Huff's original text? I have seven different Huff's Qurans. There are seven different Huff's Qurans. Do any of them go back to 796? No. no. We don't have one manuscript that goes back to 796. So even the one that he chose in 1924 for only the city of Cairo, we don't even know if it is Huff's Quran. So we have many scripts which goes to the Ibn Amir's Quran, but we don't have many scripts which goes to the Huff's Quran. Okay, now Yet. Hatu, there were 39 different Qurans. One was chosen for the city of Cairo in 1924. What did they do with the other 36 Qurans? So, remember, Uthman burned all the Qurans. In 1924, they sink all the Qurans into the river. Which river? They took all the other 38 Qurans, they all took them onto they a boat. All what they have. All what they have. All what they had, which means about 38, they took them onto a boat and they threw them into the Nile River! Oh. They're still there today! Solutions. Solutions. But hold on a minute. 
solution. You don't need to go and find them. Because Huntu has already found 32 of them just by going to modern day marketplaces. They're not for sharing. They need to go and find But where did you find your 32? Oh, well, if you go to the Muslim majority countries, Nigeria, Yemen, Egypt, Morocco, those are very accessible for everyone to buy it, and it is much cheaper than the half Quran. So you can still get these Qurans today. They are all different, but hold on a minute. Now, remember what I said, that this was only for the city of Cairo in 1924. In 1936, the Egyptian government realized what a successful model the Cairo model was. And so they decided to make the Huskaran chosen by Muhammad ibn Ali Husseini al Haddad in 1924. They decided to make it Egypt wide. So every Quran in Egypt then became standardized to the Huskaran. And it was known as the Farouk edition, named after King Farouk, who was came to power in 1936. But that was only for Egypt. Yeah. What happened in Damascus? So here we go. Now let's get to his question. So what then, and how is it that the Hafs Quran became the standard Quran for the whole world? Anybody know? Yeah, for money, money. No, it was cheaper to get. Because the other one was so small. So that one in was 1985, the green. in 1985, King Fahd, who was king of Saudi Arabia at that time, seeing what had happened in Cairo, was noticing successful. what had happened in Egypt, realizing what a success it was, he decided that the Hafs Quran would be the standard Quran for the whole world. Hey. Now, how many people are older than 1985? Raise your hands. Every one of you that is raising their hands right now, you are older than the Quran! So the Quran that he is reading, he is correct. This is the Saudi Arabian Quran. But it was only chosen 34 years ago! I don't lie. I didn't lie. Here's the sad thing. Have you noticed on the Dawah in this book of the Quran? It is very serious. Islamic tradition tells us that Quran has been corrupted. Which is good. History tells us Quran has been corrupted. History tells us human beings stepped into the word of Allah and intentionally changed the word of Allah. And today, we have zero Quran from the time of Muhammad, zero Quran from the time of Abu Bakr, zero Quran from the time of Uthman. You just said you have 93 Why, why, you why we don't, we don't have, have, have it? Yeah, yeah, you left your ears at home. You don't even understand this serious claim we are making. So can you see, there is not any Quran that we can find in the first century of Islam that's complete, right? Second century Islam. We can find any Quran that is complete from the second century of Islam. That's the ninth century. We can't find any Quran that is complete by the 10th century. We can't find one Quran that is complete by the 11th century. You mean we So can't... Muslims, where is there for complete Quran? JJ, you mean we cannot find any Quran from 10th and 11th century, which is exactly the same what we are reading today? Yes, he should ask me, not you, because you are a Christian. Why don't you ask me? Dawah, you have no answer. Which which I'm satisfied with. Which It's only 34 years old. It only goes back to 1985. I'm older than that Quran. And so are most of you here today. Because there have been no, the only official Quran that has now been standardized by the Ibn Saud family and by King Fahd himself was in 1985. There are 39 different Arabic Qurans. The Hafs was chosen only 34 years ago. Now, what do we have said today? When Muslims have a problem with their Quran, what's the first thing they do? To open their book, right? Then what do they do with the Sana manuscript? They washed it off when they didn't like it. Then what do they do? Hold on a minute. You notice they either burn the Quran or wash it off 
our food into the river. And that's not all. When they find a Quran that does not agree with the 1985 King Fahd Quran, they either erase it or insert it or delete it or cover it. Thank God we don't have that problem with the Bible. Welcome to the world of Islam. We cannot delete it. We cannot the cancel it. Is the 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 is the have you seen Qurans that have been deleted? Have you seen them today? We show, we show the examples. Whatever, whatever you deny, physical evidence was in front of you. Today, you can lie and you can deny. Today, you can pretend you never seen it. But on the day of judgment, when you stand in front of Lord Jesus Christ, you will never able to deny. You will never able to turn blind eyes. It's not going to help you. You will be accountable for the believing in corrupted Quran. So, here's the alternative for you, Yahya. While you are hungry for the perfect eternal word of God, while you are hungry for someone or something to tell you who got it, got it. it is it is the way to cross. It is the cross of Christ will help you and then fit your hunger. Okay. Because Lord Jesus Christ is the perfect eternal word of God you are looking for. It is the Lord Jesus Christ, the perfect God you are looking for. It is the perfect Lord Jesus Christ offers you perfect eternal life. He is not corrupted. He is not eaten by sheep. He is not Please come to Christian. Now folks, here we go. Here we go. We need to end this up. Bring it down. I want to remember. Remember what we said. Can you remember what we said at the very beginning? What did we say at the very beginning? Can you speak to Christianity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on to Jesus Christ. Who is the King of Kings? Jesus. Who is the Lord of Lords? Jesus. Who is God in heaven? Jesus. Who is God on earth? Jesus. Who died on the cross? Jesus. Who then rose again? Jesus. Who is now in heaven? Jesus. Who waits for you in me? Jesus. Who wants to bring you home? Jesus. What's in need? Jesus. And hear you. Jesus. And again. Jesus. Jesus. One question. One question. Thank you, Jay. One no, wait a minute. We're not finished. One okay, question. hold on a minute. We need to bring this to a conclusion. One question. Here we go. Please, one question. Allow me one question. Allow me one question. Of course and you will ask question. You never I ask for the one question. If I want to join Christianity, Please. how can I trust a God who betrayed and forsake his son ah. who died on the cross ah. for his blood? Let me respond. Ah. Let me respond. Jesus went willingly to the cross. No one betrayed him. Let me respond. And everybody can receive him. Let me answer, let me answer that question. We pray to God the Father. I have a question for you. I have a question for you. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm talking. You can talk to me. Yeah, you can talk to me. Father, to be saved. Yeah, yeah, you can talk to me. Okay, folks, let's wrap this up. Are you, are you, are you going to have a question? Are you going to heaven? Answer the question. James, okay, folks, what did we start off with today? Quiet, quiet, quiet. Hey, quiet, 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 quiet. You're just going to give him oxygen. Don't talk. Sir, 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 talk later. Talk later, not now, not now. Okay, did you notice? Sir, talk later, talk later, I'm sorry. Now, did you notice what did we start out with? We started out with the biblical text, did we not? Did we make the claims about the Bible that the Muslims are making about the Quran? No. Absolutely not. Do we claim that this book is eternal? No. Do we claim that it was sent down over a 22-year period or any year period? 
Was it written by men? Yes. Do we know their names? Yes. Do we put their names on the books? Yes. Are they written over a period of 1,500 years? Yes. In 33 languages? Yes. In three continents? Yes. In three languages? Yes. In three languages. Yes. In three languages. In three languages. So, Muslims make the claim, Muslims make the claim that the Quran is eternal. Okay, Muslims make the claim that the Quran is eternal. Am I correct? Please, please, stop it. Shut up. Both of you. You're not helping. You're not helping. You're making it go faster. Okay? Okay, let's continue on. Do Muslims make the claim that this is their, their book is eternal? Yes. Do they make the claim that it was sent down to Muhammad over a 22-year period? Do Muslims make the claim that it was complete to the time of Uthman? Yes. Do Muslims make the claim that it's never changed since then? Yes. Have we destroyed that today? Yes. But hold on a minute. Is this the only word of God we've got? No. no. Jesus. Is there another word of God Jesus. who came to earth yes. and took on human form? Yes. What is his name? Jesus. What is his name? Jesus. Okay, now let's ask the same questions of Jesus that we've asked of the Quran. Is Jesus eternal? Yes. Did Jesus come down? Yes. Is Jesus complete? Yes. Has Jesus ever changed? No. Who is the word of God? is God. Yes. Everything the Muslims want, we've got. Yes. The things they want for their Quran, we've got in Jesus Christ. Can you see we can answer every question because of Jesus Christ. Folks, just come back to Jesus. He is the Word of God, the eternal Word of God. He never changes. He is complete and He's here today. And we're saying hello to Jesus. God bless Jesus you. It's been Hallelujah. great to be with you. I don't know you Thanks, away from me. Thank you, you say down. Okay. Yeah. Jesus will take you away from me because he makes you to love